It is Sunday night here in my quilting neighborhood. Thanks for joining me. I'm Pat Sloan on my fireside chat, which is my fireside. My fireside is actually behind me in my studio space. Weird, huh? But that's the way it is. That's the way the my my room is in the uh, I'm in the uh, family room of our home. I want to tell you what's been going on this week and I actually have some questions. I asked in the group uh, if you had some questions so I'm going to check in and see what they are as well. That'll be kind of fun to uh, intersperse a little bit about what I have going on and what kind of questions are there. So first I want to remind you that the um, Crafters Companion, the I've got stuff here all over my table. So the uh, die cut with the build a block is uh, on uh, on sale this week where you can get the machine and this particular die set which I'm using with my flower bouquet you can get these plus the discount plus the uh, free shipping and I don't want you to miss out if you were thinking about it uh, and you want to pick that up you know there's other dies and I'm going to be talking about that and I'll have some sort of new deal after February 1 so I'm working with the company and figuring out what can be what will they uh, offer to to all of us so that'll be super fun I also did a uh, you know I do the stuff for the button club Fat Quarter Shops button club they asked me to design uh, projects for the buttons and the button ladies have been doing some projects and I was just sharing theirs for a while this year but now I'm back to designing uh, projects for the button club so here is hello love you know, it's all about Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, it's all about Valentine's Day now. I am all about hearts and flowers and this fabric is called, I think it's called Hello Sweetheart. I'll do a link. Everything I'm talking about, I'll link to so you can find it. But look, isn't that cute? Look, look, and here's the buttons. They are darling. They also, the button ladies also have a pattern in your button kit. So you can uh, make their project, which is super, super cute. But this is mine. You can make it in a table runner. Uh, you can make go crazy and do a whole big quilt, but it's really fast. And then I also showed you that when you uh, do sew and flip, you're going to come up with little half square triangles. And so I give you the directions on how to make this little mug rug, or if you just want coasters, make the little coasters. The hearts are part of the fabric line too. So that is in the charm pack. So these are using charm packs. All about charm packs. Yes. All right, let me see what kind of questions you have here. Somebody's got a question. So Mary Jane asked about uh, if you do raw edge applique, which with a blanket stitch, um, will it hold up to laundering? You know, if you run it through the wash a lot. And it will, you need to take a, a couple things into consideration. It is raw edge, so there's nothing turned under. And your bite, the bite, which is the part that grabs the fabric, you know, you have a straight part and then you have a bite on the applique stitch. That needs to be holding enough of the applique shape down. If you're doing teeny tiny little decorative blanket stitches, they might, um, you know, might not hold up as well to a heavy laundering uh, schedule. But if you just make sure your bite is grabbing that, then once it starts to be washed, because mine are not full fusible, they're just along the edge, once you start washing that a lot, it's possible it's going to lift up or have little, you know, threads come off, um, you know, to fray. Because it's, you know, on the bias, you've got curves, you've got, you know, curvy shapes. You can eliminate some of that by using applique that is done with batiks because the batiks have a really tight weave. So if you do your applique with batiks, you will eliminate for, for an item that's going to be washed heavily, that will eliminate the possible fraying. So really just get that bite big enough and you'll be, you'll be good to go. Um, okay, so Karen asked about my uh, quilt that has the snowman in the corner and it's kind of seasonal. Uh, that is a, a very, very old pattern that I would have to link you to find a book like on the secondhand market. The pattern's uh, not available anymore. So I will, I will try to do that. Um, it's, uh, you know, in an older book. I don't think that publisher has it as digital, but I will double check that. So Lynn wants to know if I'm ever coming to Australia. 
well, you never say never, but there's nothing planned. I don't have any plans to do any kind of long-term travel at all, and I don't have plans for any for very much short-term travel at the moment. I'm doing a whole lot of other kind of work. So um, right now, no, but I never say never. Never say never. Okay, here. I'm so excited. This quilt turned out so darn cute. The Oh My Stars, you know, I'm, I asked you about doing a, a uh, quilt show page for the Oh My Stars um, project so that you could share yours and I want to reformat that because I have another one and this one is with the Sweetheart fabric by Laundry Basket. Look, I'll just hold it like this. Ta-da! Isn't this cute? Here, get another closer view. This fabric is the same fabric as I'm doing the Christmas figs in blue but this is the red pink and tan version it is so pretty I think everybody loves this fabric uh, even if this isn't maybe your go-to style it's just such a pretty line of fabric so that is uh, I, I'll put a link to the to that fabric so if you want to make one like that and I'll be sharing some pictures now the website where I can get my links from was doing maintenance all weekend, so I couldn't show you. I had this picture and I couldn't show you because I couldn't link you to anything. So that their maintenance is over, thank goodness. It took much longer than they said that it would. So, okay. So the other thing I did like last night at 10 o'clock, I decided I just need to sew something simple. Simple, simple, simple. You know how that goes. It's probably too late. I probably should not have been doing that. Uh, so hold on one second. I'll answer another question, but I have to I have to tell you about that it is crazy So Heather line Heather asked how much time do I spend a day on quilting? Well, if you want to know how much time do I spend a day on my quilting business? like right now <laughs> Where I'm talking to you my most of my day probably 12 hours a day most every day I spend on my quilting business how much of that do I sit and actually sew something hour or two a day then other days I might sew a good portion of the day but I have a lot of things that I do to run a business and um, the sewing it, you know is not something I get to do every single day you know for long periods of time it's just short snips here short snips there so that's the way it is when you own a business and if I were doing this for fun and and retired it would probably be different I'd probably tell you a lot more hours in the day but uh, maybe you know right now it's uh, a little bit of sewing and a lot of quilt business stuff which is good I don't mind it that's what I do that's what I like so let me tell you about this project I was like I just was so, so messed up I just so messed up I am doing disappearing nine patches and here they are so at about 10 o'clock last night I went oh I want something simple I am tired of thinking of thinking things I don't want to read a pattern to make a block you know I want something simple so I had I remembered I had these these are like cozy Christmas fabric something like that so let me uh oops let me go down here you can see them <clears throat> they're just super cute blocks super cute fabric and, and disappearing nine patches are very easy. I'm going to show you how they work. This is the result. I have this entire big stack of it. It's so like there's like there's the recipe um, fabric, and I love these deer. These deer are so so darling. Um, cute cute snowmen. So I have these, and that's the way the disappearing nine patch is supposed to look. And in order to get that, you let me put this up here you sew a nine patch here's a nine patch and you, I put red in the middle of everything and then these four and then what you do is you cut it like this which will give you units like that which go and you put four of them Oop, see you have four like you know there would be how that works so what did I do last night oh my goodness remember fabric print fabrics in the corners oh no no N not what I did last night I did this I did all of them with this in the corner so I was not happy because I want then I cut then I cut it so I ended up with one like this so I want to show you what it looks like which is actually a neat design but it's not what I was going for so I have to redo I have to rip 
So let's talk about that a second because I think people <clears throat> have a little bit of, uh, what would we say, angst or trepidation or just unhappiness, general unhappiness when they have to unsew. This is a seam ripper. It's your friend. Meet your friend. Now we, <laughs> we have a running joke in my Facebook community that we call this Jack, that we have a date with Jack. So you've got a date with Jack. You know, some people are like, ah, I had to have a date with Jack again. You know, you try not to do have too many dates with Jack. He gets around. I know some people are like, oh, that's a weird thing, Jack the Ripper, but we like it. It's just for fun. So I have to unsew like five of these blocks and then make another one. But I figured that was faster than making all new blocks because it really doesn't take that long to just go down really quick. And I just, here, just quick, I'll show you just what I'm doing. Cause it's not, I don't make it so difficult. I just go along and I pop, Oops, I'm trying to do this so as I just pop through, I usually hold this closer to my face because I wear bifocals. So I will just pop through like that along the whole length and then I can just pull it. So you have to pull the threads off, but that's no big deal. It's just life, life in the land of quilting, life in the neighborhood, our quilting neighborhood, right? Do you like that? I'm kind of liking neighborhood. I'm trying to find a way to just sort of have us talk about us as a as a group you know because we're all friends so i'm thinking neighborhood is nice and friendly we can all live in wouldn't it be fun to live in the same neighborhood like a quilting neighborhood sort of like the disneyland but but quilting so let's see what okay so rhonda wanted to know how another question rhonda wanted to know how i keep so organized well i have a background in computers. I ran very large um, production projects and development and uh, maintenance projects in computer systems. So you had to be very organized. I had a staff of 40 people at one time running zillions of projects. So I organized things. It's and I can do it because that's how my brain works. I don't have any control over that part. I was just kind of made this way. My brain thinks very structured and very organized and very methodical. So that's, um, that's the way I'm uh, built. That's the way I'm, I'm you know, set up. My, and, and so it works for me. Um, so I, I can, it, it's not hard. You know, I, it's kind of like the process and workflow for me is exactly uh, all of that organizing just suits me. So that's, that's why I can kind of do all those things and do all the things I do and keep track of it because it's sort of second nature. Oh, okay, so here's another fun question. This is an interesting one. A couple of people had questions I can't really answer here without prepping stuff because it's all about like how do seams go together and things like that. They're great questions, but I can't, I don't have any props to show you. But Heather has one. Um, do I ever, now Heather, I never use that H word, that A, hate. I don't use that. That's not a nice word. So instead, I will use the word, uh, do I ever have, she wants to, <laughs> It's like, oh, she wants to know, do I ever have a quilt that's not turning out well? And, you know, then what do I do if it's not turning well, out well? If I don't think it's turning out well, do I stop? Um, do I finish it? All right, so if I have a feeling something's not turning out well, and it is for production, remember, this is my business. So if it's for production and it's not turning out well, if I don't like it, you're not going to like it. So that means I have to stop and fix it. Whatever the problem is, I have to stop and fix. If I'm doing something for fun, maybe I'm making a quilt for one of my nieces or nephews or for my brothers or my sister-in-laws. Maybe I'm making a gift for, you know, a friend uh, and I don't like it. I'm also going to stop and fix it. If there's something I don't like, I need to understand what it is. Why don't I like it? What is the problem with it? Um, and then I'll, then I'll fix it. So that, to me, if it's not going well, I mean, you can occasionally, some people will suggest, well, just leave it and come back to it. And occasionally that works because you might just be tired. 
you might not be in a right place to be making a decision that now it's not right. But if it's that lingering, 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 like every time you're like, this isn't, you know, there's something about this I don't like. So what you have to do is pinpoint it. Find exactly what it is you don't like and fix that. So that, that's how I operate anyways. Okay. There's some other, there's a couple other cute questions there, but let me show you some, I have my like rolling assistant back here. I brought the rolling, the rolling cart so I could put some things on it. I think I've been telling you that my book is here. Yay. Well, my copy, only my copy is here. <laughs> you have to pre-order, but you can. So I'll put a link so you can, uh, you can pre-order my book. I can't wait. Uh, here is the one I showed today, the quilt I showed today, the, the table runner with the mittens. Yes. So it's like no lost mittens is what I call this. No lost mittens. And here's another, because it's winter. So here's another wintry one. This will be fun for us to make together, right? So it's sort of a, I call it my Nordic winter dreams. Then the other book that came in this week, which is out, is the big book of lap quilts. These books by my publisher, Martingale, are amazing. These big books, I have two, two quilts in this one. This one here and this one on the back. So these have so many designs. Like here's a really neat one. You know, ways to make lap quilts, lots and lots. There's some with applique, lots and lots of patchwork. This is pretty cool. They're just tons, 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 tons. A lot of them will use pre-cuts and you can get, oh, this is super cute. Nice and cozy. So many, how many, how many? 51, 51. That's a lot. That's a lot of patterns in one book. They're great value. There's a whole bunch of different topics for the A Big Book Of. Uh, and they all have like, you know, 50 patterns in them. They're incredible, incredible value. Okay, let's see. What do I got there? So Savina says, what do you do when you realize the color background and the block don't coordinate? Do you start over or regroup? Well, it's very similar to what Heather asked about, do you not like it? But this is more specific. Before I sew anything, um, Savina, what I do is I'll audition the fabrics, like I'll lay them out and be sure they look good together as a grouping before I sew anything. And then if this is something that's block based, where it's just, you know, it's a couple, it's it gonna be multiple blocks, I would, could do a test block and see that the fabrics are actually, once you cut them up, you know, do they still look good made into patchwork? Because just because it's a big piece on your table doesn't mean when you cut it, it's going to look good, you know, because you're making smaller pieces. So test blocks are an excellent way to resolve that what if, you know, question uh, before you start cutting. I never cut like a zillion blocks. I never cut like a whole quilt without having first audition and made a test block. And personally, I just never cut a whole quilt first anyway. So I just don't, I don't like working like that. I like working, cutting a bit, sewing a bit, cutting a bit, sewing a bit. But if you're a person who likes to cut everything first, then absolutely test that before you've done all that and then you decide you don't, they don't work together. Okay. This is my fireside chat. If you are just popping in, I'm Pat Sloan. And uh, generally I do these about three times a month is about what I'm doing right now. They're not on a totally perfect schedule or anything. I do, um, Mondays I do my podcasts, but the fireside chats are, um, you know, usually on the weekend, but sometimes I've done them other days. Okay, here, for those of you who were on Friday, was it Friday I was doing this? Talking about my bins, where I needed to order bins because I have this um, skinny, well, it's about this wide, uh, tower. It's like six shelves, a little like bookshelf thing that's next to my design wall. And I've just been putting stuff on it, putting stuff on it. And there's no rhyme or reason and no good at all. So I finally, I measured and I got the, these bins because in these bins are gonna go projects. So it's just a project so I can have it in the bin. I have them over here on this shelf. Let me show you. See over on that, that's my koala um, 
shelving. So I have projects up there too, where there's stuff behind my, it's like, a, this is like another like design wall where I have the little squares going on. Uh, <laughs> but I'm so excited these came in and they fit because I'm not always that good at the, uh, you know, like I tried to measure everything and be sure it was right. So they actually fit perfectly. And this, I, I put this note up there the other day. Let me see if there's another question and then I'll show you this and then we'll probably wrap, wrap it up so that I can go check my soup. But so once again, last time I was doing soup, I'm checking, I'm doing soup again today. This today I'm doing taco soup, you know, where you do like the ranch dressing and the um, taco seasoning and all kinds of different beans and hamburger. So, okay, there's a few more things. Uh, so there's a question from Ann. Ann says when she's putting on borders, do I put first put one border on like the long sides first and second, just first, the long sides first, and the second question is do I alternate and do short side first or stay the same with the long? There'll be, th there'll be three borders. Okay, so Ann, you're doing a quilt with three borders, so like you don't have a border on the top, you have like two sides and a bottom. Like from a design standpoint, a designer, you know, because I write patterns, I want to be sure that I have don't have to buy as long a piece of fabric as pos as as you know too much, so that if I have long sides, I will want to put those on first. So they're as long. That's the longest I need to have them. If I'm, I, so that means the bottom will go on afterwards. So I'll have middle side side, and then put the bottom uh, border, because if I put the bottom border on first, that means those two long strips on the side would have to be longer, right, to cover that bottom and top if you're doing four. So I generally put the longer ones first so they're the sh that's as long as they need to be and then the top and bottom come after. That way the length of fabric, if you're doing fabric that doesn't have to be pieced, I can get be the most efficient as possible, meaning I don't have to over buy. Hope that makes sense. So if it doesn't, leave a note on this and I'll, I'll come back through. So Danielle uh, asked, do I have tips on figuring out patterns? I'm not really sure what that means. So put a bit more information, like what kind of, what kind of tip, like what are you having problems with in the pattern that you're trying to figure out how, trying to figure out how to read it, trying to figure out how to um, pick colors for it. I'm not really sure. It's kind of, it's kind of not, give me some more information. Give me some more details on what you want to know. And you can leave that here uh, or go back to your original one. Okay. Let's see. Okay, there's another good one from Sue. I'll see if I have time in, in, in a minute to do that. Um, but I also have lots of videos on Sue's question that she can go watch or you all can go watch. So anyway, let me just do the last thing because this bin has the cross stitch pattern. Here it is. This is the one that uh, I'm going to ex going to do. I've not done cross stitch in a zillion years. So if you, if you cross stitch uh, and haven't done it for a zillion years, maybe you want to play along. So there it is. It's super cute. It's not really that big. See, you know, just like a sheet of paper. Um, so I'm thinking to start with the flower pot in the middle. Uh, I know Kimberly Jolly at Fat Quarter Shop has done a lot of videos uh, <clears throat> on, cro on the cross stitch stuff. So if you want to go watch hers because you've never done it, you can do that. I am going to do mine on burlap. So here is the burlap. I thought I'd open it. There we go. Oh, it feels nice. I have used burlap for lots of things. I actually used to rug hook. So that used to be something I do. That earlier question about, you know, what craft did I like? I liked rug hooking a lot. That was a lot of fun. I, but I sort of, you know, moved away from that. But I dyed wool. Um, I've dyed cotton. Like I said, I've done everything. So this is the base. And I got the Q frame the Q frame. Now I know there's lots of ways you can frames, do to frame, make frames for, for putting the cross stitch. And I've had Q frames for quilting years and years and years ago. 
but I haven't had any in a long time. So I will, I will need to read the directions, but there's basically putting it together. So it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. And then you get the last one in, right? And then those clips on the end will hold, uh, these will hold the, whoop, and got that one all the way in. So then these things will hold the cross stitch, the cloth. So if you've never done this or haven't done this in a long time like me, uh, I'll put that later, so you could, you could follow my adventures in cross stitch. I will be using the Orifil floss. So it comes in little wooden spools and there is a, ta -da, it's a floss. I've got all the colors because I work with Orifil. So they sent me all the colors. They're very, very pretty. So I have to find some colors that work. So I need to get this cloth out. That's one of the things I'm gonna do. And I'll probably do the talk about this cross stuff stitch, cross, <laughs> cross stitch stuff here on my fireside chats. Let me know if you like that idea. Um, maybe I'll just do like a progress report and then I'll just show it in the Facebook group and stuff like that. So my, my uh, community. Okay, one more question. Where, where did Sue's? So Sue wanted to know if I could talk about the Orifil thread, the weights, what you use them for. I mean, that's a long, that's a long discussion and I have videos on that already that I've done for Orifil. Um, basically, the Orifil thread spools are all color coordinated because I don't, I wasn't prepared with all of those things here, but I will uh, link you over to a video which gives you the basics. Uh, and then uh, at some point I'll probably should write a new article, maybe do some new videos. Those videos are very old. It hasn't changed any, but uh, I haven't, I haven't done them in a long time. Um, so let me, uh, and I'm starting to think I may have answered a question wrong up above. So if I did, I will write it in the text about my snowman quilt. The book is still, that book is still available. I, for, I was thinking of a different project. So this is the one I, I bring, the snowman is in the one corner and it's the seasons. Um, I got confused there. I was thinking of something else, but it just, it just all of a sudden occurred to me. I don't know why. Okay. So Orifil thread, I will link you up because there are four main weights. Then there's um, the fifth weight, which is newer for, um, which is very thin. There's the floss and a couple other things. So I will, I will get you some links on that here in the, in the process. So I'm Pat Sloan for my fireside chat. I had to go check on my soup and put all this away and I'll come through here and if you've got other questions, write them down and I'll check on them. I'll answer them. I so appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for spending time with me and sewing with me. I'm Pat Sloan. See you later.